This is Flotilla Friday uh, for October 1st, 2021. Uh, we got started a little bit before the recording, but mostly we're talking about how to pick, uh, how to pick times for uh, Flotilla Friday um, meetings. And uh, we've got pretty good notes about what we've covered so far. So if you're watching this, you haven't miss missed anything if you check the notes. Um, and I was about to finish the sentence, be good about uh, recording meetings. Um, I think uh, another one in here for me is um, uh, if you have a, at least a few people who can provide continuity across meetings, that, I think that's really helpful. One thing I'm curious about is um, if in the short run, our um, the, the people who were not accommodating that we want to accommodate and who we are, who we don't want to lose range from, from, you know, Australia back through the US to how far I mean, anybody who is participating, I'm just wondering what the earliest and latest times, like if we moved on Friday, how much we would have to move before we lost our easternmost person and how far would we have to move to get our westernmost person? Um, I, I know, well, is this is this choosing one time or well, choosing times well? Just, just actually wondering um, what the distance between our, you know, how yeah. close we are to sharing a time. Um, I, if, if, I mean, if, like if we alternated between, you know, 11 and four on Fridays, you know, whether that- There's, there's a, if, if you want to get, <clears throat> If you want to get kind of equidistant around the globe, you end up needing two meetings pretty much. Um, so uh, Wendy Elford, I, I'm very familiar with her schedule. Uh, she can get she can make a 6 a.m. meeting for her, which is 1 p.m. our time. Um, uh, however, I think um, Craig in Thailand, um, I, I always get the direction confused, but he's about three hours ahead or behind of Wendy. Um, and then um, I think uh, I think last one, Thursday, we talked about this a little bit. Um, the uh, Wendy and I have a uh, massive wiki Wednesday. For me, it's Tuesday. And for her, it's Wednesday. Um, we have that at uh, 530 my time, which is 1030 her time. And I think that's 730 um, Craig's time. Um, so you have to get to get Asia and Australia, you need to get pretty late in the day. And so, you know, 5.30, 5, 5 o'clock, um, my time is 8 o'clock your time, which is starting to get kind of late, right? Um, and then that, that completely blows Europe, you know, um, except for Charles, uh, Charles who stays up late. Um, so, um, and then I guess another thing, another consideration is not just geography, but uh, also, um, uh, let's see. Um, uh, I'm back up at line 19. Um, Um, friendly for people who have jobs. So there's a whole other, you know, we miss people because of ge geographical um, places. We miss people because they're at work. Um, interesting idea, Mark, uh, to split meetings by tech and non tech. Um, yeah, I, I'm not crazy about that. I, I actually love it's it's meetings are best when you've got kind of a mix of people. 
except oh, when I, the techies geek out and and totally bore the the regular people. I I think we tech is a very good opportunity for subcommittees sometimes. Yes, but certainly yes. we need a place where we get to talk across that yeah. divide. Yeah. That is vital, vital, vital. Yeah. Um, hey Zeke, uh, we're all on. Uh, we're watching HackMD. Um, I just dropped a link in the chat, um, and right now we happen to be talking um, kind of meta stuff, just figuring out how we can meet um, best, have a, a reasonable community, and and actually get everybody's times reasonable. Um, which sounds like a super boring topic, but it's like super critical. <laughs> um, uh so uh so this is kind of my brain dump of of situations um and i still don't i so so actually let me go through line 23 collaboratively chosen times uh probably different each week um conceptually i this is this is something that i think is technically wonderful and and uh not humane at all um i think it's completely impractical but uh, let me at least dig through it a little bit um uh so my you know my 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 rough total geeky kind of idea is like oh my gosh you could have this thing where everybody gets a certain number of tokens and then you know uh over the weekend you spend your tokens on different times and you know some magical thing picks the time and it's like okay you're all meeting at uh wednesday at 2 p.m pacific you know or whatever right um so the uh, the big problem with this um uh, i think is the the regularity of a time uh, having a fixed time and knowing that i can everybody each person can kind of jigger their life around getting to or not getting to a, a fixed meeting it makes it a lot easier than than having the meeting kind of like all over the place every time um uh so that teaches me something about democracy or something like that um it's it's better to have fixity rather than um uh collaboration the the other thing is that that collaborative process the collaborative process just to manage that would be a nightmare whether or not you used a, a form or an air table or a currency or whatever um so thanks for letting me talk through that one um just so that we can throw it away i think um i it so how about alternating alternating times every week that's kind of got the same problem it's hard to like is this an even week or is it an odd week um I know I would show up at the wrong the wrong time half the time. Um, it also <laughs> Bill likes that idea, or or well, if you did, well, depending it. on which app, you could like not then not show up on anything. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right. We, we have Google Calendar for that. I mean, it's okay. We yeah. can automate the. Google Calendar covers about like 85% of my life, but there's like still like 15% of the time I'm running on wetware rather than than um, the Googleplex. So I, I would miss some of the meetings or actually I wouldn't miss any of the meetings, but I would certainly show up for the wrong time half the time or a third of the time or whatever. Pete, I'm just wondering if with, with uh, Wednesdays where you have if I understood correctly, you now have two meetings every week, right? You uh, yourself. Wiki, Wiki Wednesdays are two. For me, they're Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, right. For for Wendy uh, Wendy Elford, they're Wednesday Thursday. But um, so I have two a week. Yeah. And, um, and the, it's livable for you. Uh, or, I I can commit you know, two hours a week to massive wiki, certainly. And then sometimes they go long and sometimes they go short. Um, Wendy and I haven't done a great job of, of promoting um, the the ANZ uh, Asia time. So it's usually just me and her, um, even though a few folks uh, even here have, have joined us. So that, another thing is that Wendy and I know that we can kind of like, it's it's a almost a, you know, free time. Um, but but anyway, I, we we're there. Um, two hours a week is not bad for massive. Week. I, I could also afford two hours a week on top of that for Flotilla Friday and on top of the other OGM stuff that's going on, things like that. I don't know if that's. And right now, your um, your Wendy 
friendly time that your Tuesday is what time it's, day again? It's uh, 5 30 p.m. my time, 8 30 right. your time. Yeah. Um, so I'm just wondering like if if on Friday there was a 5 30 year time meeting that we in the it East would, sometimes showed up at yeah that. it would be okay yeah i mean just as a as a as a as a doable step that doesn't uproot this meeting yet but like accommodates yeah. that and I, I i personally you know i'm not like out partying friday night so i show up for the friday night I, I, I can I can tell you that there'll be resistance in this household for a Friday night regular meeting. <laughs> well, no, in addition, in addition, that like, well, this time the current time is not good for uh, Mark Antoine either. Oh, I see. Okay, so we're looking so for doubly bad for him. <laughs> okay. Um, I by the way to mention uh, we we talked a little bit about scheduling uh, in the Thursday call OGM call. Um, I think it was um, uh, now I forget. But I, but, but, but th evening of uh, another day, like you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday is thinkable. Uh, Monday, I already have something. But um, there's there's a call. Somebody else mentioned um it would be cool to have an evening meeting just to like that's the time when i kick back and be social you know so um i thought that was an interesting you know sometimes some people want evening meetings just because that's a, a good time to, to socialize um uh so maybe where we've gotten to is we've talked through the couple alternatives I had thought about alternating and the, the fancy collaborative choice one that changes every week. Um, so two meetings a week is probably a, the, a good sweet spot. So then then we're kind of down to picking two times, maybe. Uh, the the five five or five thirty Pacific time is actually not great for me. Um, it it interferes with our our beach time, dog walking time, um, and and that's externally motivated by the time that the beach opens for dogs. Um, that that shifts a little bit at the end of October. As as actually everybody's schedule is going to change with daylight savings time and shorter days. Yeah, I remember hearing about how in Australia you've the daylight saving times moves opposite. So you've got two hours of shift. Yeah. For any agreement we do until DST change has to be revisited at the boundary. Yeah. That's gonna be an if we have Australians on board, yes. Yeah. Where yeah. is Wendy? Uh she's in Canberra. Uh which okay, is so that's, she's uh, one of the yeah. That's not Wendy McCall, right? Uh, it's Wendy Elford. Elford, okay. And Wendy McLean is in New York. Uh, McLean, sorry. Yes, that I knew, yes. Um, somebody, somebody else. Friday nights for us. It's Saturday morning, Asia. Yeah, that's true. Um, we could also do Thursday nights. Friday, Friday at 5 p.m. actually works out, I think, for our beach time. Um, Thursday is worse. Um, How's Wednesday? Uh, worse okay but uh so uh so f goals for two times um it would be nice to pick up wendy alford it would be nice to make it uh nice for mark antoine and mark carranza um i'm i'm pretty flexible actually in my schedule um anybody else with weird schedule things we want to try to accommodate My schedule is well, are... pretty flexible except for specific meetings. And unfortunately, Friday is um, 10 to 1, basically. Other than that, um, pretty free. So here, at least in uh, Casa Anderson, after like 5 p.m. Central Time, 
I just, it's more dogs and family. So occasionally something could happen, but generally no. But that's, you know, you all do your thing. Mark Antoine, someday I want to just talk with you more about hyperknowledge because I just, I just don't. I still have a thousand questions and we either got to have a meeting about it or we just have to somehow get something informal going back and forth. I, I, I'm happy to have a private thing uh, or I'm happy. One thing I we did propose at some point is let's have a separate hyper knowledge meeting, which is like regular collective meeting, which I think would make a lot of sense, but which does not preclude having a one on one. And by the way, thank you for the reference it was an interesting article. I love that. I mean, Bill Kent is, I mean, he passed away in the early aughts, but he's just a freaking a pleasure to read. That's for sure. Uh, so yeah, uh, I have not begun the process of to, trying to think of a regular, good regular time for a regular hyper knowledge meeting, which is it's tricky. It's tricky. Um, I so well, well which is let me throw it it wouldn't have to be I mean regular you know the frequency is could be you know maybe once a month a few people you know and in the yeah. interim we pass around stupid little notes here I had this word idea look yeah, at yeah, my yeah. funny diagram with like you know concept conceptual links on it and just let that you know like people people in research like they do things and then share things and then occasionally you know beat each other over the head I, I think that's, I think that's fine, other. but um, I, I actually have a vote for every week hyper knowledge. I, I need that much hyper knowledge in my life. Um, <laughs> uh, so I think I got what I need out of this discussion, which is two, two times a week is a reasonable thing to do and some ideas around how to minimize things, but brain and stuff like that. Um, so then my, my suggestion is going to be that we um, do the do the actual time picking uh, asynchronously um, and we're going to have to do it once now and then once again in a month um, when DST settles down. So um, I suggest stick, stick to the current time for now uh, until DFT. Yeah, that's fair. That's actually a really good idea. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, so up at line... Actually, I guess I can't put a section there. Um, at line 29. Um, and I think, you know what, I'm going to pick uh, Tuesday 11. I have the meeting at 10 I have is the OGM meeting. <laughs> so right after that, I could pick Tuesday 11 Eastern, <laughs> right after the um, build OGM call would be a good time for a hyper knowledge call, okay. I think, on the same in between accommodates a lot of people and not everybody, <laughs> but. Yep. Um, so this time picking asynchronously, I, I, I think I've got some, I, I did a thing on Google Sheets once uh, where, which was kind of like a better, better thing than doodle for the, the task. Um, so um, that's kind of what I'm thinking, um, maybe a Google Sheets thing. I'll see if I can borrow my wife's Zoom account, which is multi, uh, <laughs> accommodates multiple person. <laughs> anyway. um, if it's if it's a, a felicitous time, um, uh, you could join the CS, CSC Zoom collective. Hmm. If you know, it, if uh, if your wife's Zoom account doesn't work out. Yep. Um, cool. Uh, okay, so that wasn't fun <laughs> for me. <laughs> I don't know if it was fun for anybody. It wasn't not, not particularly it's not necessary. Fun, it's necessary. But it, it was like a chore. Um, so let's pick a fun topic now. <laughs> um, updates about other communities. I have a couple. Um, debrief last week, I think, is too big. Um, although we could talk about how to debrief last week, uh, which would be 
productive. Um, Hyperknowledge would be super fun for me. Talking about decentralizing, de decentralization web three would be kind of fun. Um, partitioning the problem of interoperability. That sounds like a really good one. Any any votes? Well, let's try. Let's start with the community updates. I think it's always useful. Okay. Um, let me. I, I've I've got exciting ones. So let me do a couple. Um, they're not super exciting, but they're top of mind for me. Um, uh, there's a community called Linked Open Wisdom. Um, some of you are probably in it, uh, which is a Telegram channel uh, around um, uh, Nate from Open Web Alliance. Uh, Nate Nate's in it. I don't know if you're in it. Um, anyway, Telegram channel, linked open wisdom. Um, this was actually ben Benjamin's, Benjamin Loves. Uh, he started it with like a few people and then it exploded into a whole thing. And it's, and if you look at it right, it's actually kind of as big as OGM, um, even though the active part of it's not, it's much smaller. Anyway, um, uh, Yarrow uh, and Jonathan Sand and Nate, kind of want to get this thing going around uh, collaborative publishing. And I'm like, yeah, I know something about collaborative publishing. And um, Yero was all excited. Uh, they were going to build uh, something in Vue.js, um, um, kind of like re-implementing a static site generator or re-implementing MWB. Um, uh, Jack, I will, I, I will ask about, the invite protocol for linked up with some comments. Um, I think it's fine to invite, but I, I, I'm, I don't actually know. Um, uh, MWB is massive wiki builder um, as a simple site generator, static site generator. And then um, Daniel Tovisi and I had a little bit of that discussion about uh, Obsidian Publish um, and mass MWB um, in, <laughs> of all places, Town Square. Uh, so anyway, um, I kind of like jiggered them around until they're like, yeah, okay, we could do kind of a massive wiki-ish thing. Um, we talked about, uh, there, a couple of people are super excited about real-time collaborative editing, uh, which uh, we're using the heck out of right now on HackMD, but on the other hand, you know, it, it's only one of the modalities that you need and it's not the critical one. Um, uh, so we talked about, how, how good or bad would it be to just edit on GitHub or GitLab? Um, I suggested that because that's kind of a dirt simple way to do, you know, a wiki. Um, and then massive MWB has the tool chain to, to finish that for, from, you know, I'm editing wiki pages to I've got a static website. MWB does that beautifully. Um, and Netlify does it beautifully. Um, even though we can make it easier uh, for people like Daniel, um, he had a, a totally reasonable thing. It's like, to Netlify, oh, that sounds super scary, man. Um, he didn't know that that's not the scary part. The scary part is the GitHub desktop. Um, uh, so anyway, today at 1 p.m. Pacific, uh, Jonathan Sand and I are going to get together and, and run through the, a couple of the tool chain um, alternatives. I'll probably show HackMD, um, definitely um, setting up a massive wiki in that, um, editing on GitHub probably. Um, a little bit of Obsidian. Um, a few of you have seen me do Obsidian and VNC, um, which uh, which is awesome for a few people and um, intimidating for for some people. Um, uh, so I'm super excited about the linked open wisdom thing, and that kind of bubbles over into a, a couple other things. Uh, okay, somebody else. Um, I'm looking at the, the last um, HackMD, and um, if I remember correctly, you had some hidden metadata up at the top, and I was trying to like, contribute to to add to that metadata. Are, are um, you are you literally looking at the last? Because I, I think I delete deleted the last one. I mean, I, or I deleted all the, the content off of it. Um, but I, I totally get what you mean. Let me point you at a Flotilla Friday um, uh, meeting, the, actually the Flotilla Friday wiki, which is only on GitHub right now. It's not. Yeah, uh, I'm looking at I'm looking at the GitHub for uh, for last week. Ah, gotcha. And, uh, okay. I could like click on meetings and go to a previous one. 
and like try yeah. and find that yaml metadata there it is and, yaml front uh, matter yeah yeah yaml front matter and there it is category meeting meeting series date um, uh, the, attendees, the, the ogm wiki is actually better at that um mm -hmm. uh and we we have more metadata on more meetings um and um uh, and let me also find the page there. Let me share my screen, maybe. But certainly that's something that any of us can contribute to. Um, yeah, the we, we didn't spend a lot of time thinking through that. Um, uh, sorry, it's been a while since I've been around poking around in these. Um, so these will have uh, actually the stewardship ones are better. Um, by the way, this is what uh, the that yet yeah, met metadata looks like if you're looking at it on GitHub, um, and then this is what it looks like in raw. And then there's a page, uh, sorry, I'm going fast. Um, there's a page somewhere in here that actually shows all of those. And that's maybe, that's what I was, where I was going. There's a, a plugin for Obsidian called Data View, I think, yeah. Um, and uh, um, part of what, part of what we've done is, um, uh, the, the YAML metadata that we're using is built around uh, the data view queries here. So if, if you're looking at this page in Obsidian, um, this actually turns into a live uh, report, a live you know dashboard thing. Um, very slick, very cool. Uh, and then the YAML front matter thing, um, I've got a link there. I wonder if I've actually got a page. Uh, the YAML front matter is there's a few uh, static site generators. I uh, don't think I have a page for it. Um, there's a few static site generators that that follow that standard. So it's a, a de facto standard. If you put um, uh, horizontal line, horizontal rule um, things at the top and the bottom of this section um, and put YAML in between it, it's you can read it as a YAML file. The YAML parsers are, are pretty happy with that because it looks like the first thing, it looks like one document and then a bunch of noise um, to a, a YAML parser. Um, and then static site generators, things like Obsidian um, also know that that's special and they'll, they'll treat it differently. Obsidian is actually pretty good with it. Um, even Massive Wikibuilder um, uh, understands the YAML front matter thing and it will slurp all of the YAML into a JSON file, which gets posted to the static website. Um, so, but the schema itself is kind of ad hoc and we just, it's its not super, and, and I think that's the way it's gonna continue to be, at least in massive wikis, um, be kind of freeform with the, the way the schema is and, and, you know, different apps will treat it differently and that's okay. Hey, Wendy. We're all on uh, HackMD, FYI. Let me post the link. Uh, other community update stuff? Um, Jerry, uh, Jerry Close, it's a harsh way to say it. it. Sounds like I'm talking Silicon Valley ease. Uh, Jerry uh, made an agreement with um, Jim Rutt, I think is his name, uh, to get uh, a reasonable sized chunk of funding for Weave the World. Um, so that's super exciting, um, partly because it's funding, yay, um, partly because it's a proof point for the next, you know, next funding discussions Jerry has. Um, and it also is going to put some resources, Jerry, Jerry can actually put some paid resources into, uh, uh, into uh, Weaving the World. So that's good. And he's talking about doing tiles, um, uh, tiles in the mosaic uh, with some of that money. Uh, so he and I have talked a little bit about, um, I've, one of the side pro or one of the projects that I've got in my backlog um, 
uh, that I keep wanting to do has got something to do with managing Zoom meeting recordings. Um, it's a pain for me. It's a pain for Jerry. Um, uh, um, and I'm sure it's a pain for a bunch of people. So wouldn't it be cool if there was a service where you said, um, you know, here's the auth into my Zoom account. Here's the auth into my uh, YouTube studio um, channel. Um, could you just make sure that everything flows there? You know, um, the, the Zoom recordings as they happen, as they, they pop up, they get downloaded, sent over to uploaded to YouTube. Um, uh, you could, I, I can imagine it turns into a transcript there and things like that. So um, I'm thinking of doing that as a, as a you know, software as a service. Um, and Jerry's um, potentially interested in funding open source development of some, some of that tool chain, at least, um, as part of the a tile in the mosaic. Mark? As far as that goes, um, I seem to remember from long ago um, all kinds of web service integration kinds of things. And it seemed to me that um, what Trove is based on, and I'm trying to remember the name of the um, uh, service um, that Vince built Trove on. Um, uh, Bubble. But it, Bubble, that's right. I think Bubble has the ability to kind of create web service workflows. I could be wrong. The uh, no code things like bubble. Um, uh, I, I've watched Vincent do it a lot. Um, Airtable, I've, I've watched other people do Airtable a lot. The no code tools um, end up having uh, API integrations with a bunch of other things. Um, sometimes first party, more often it's third party. Um, uh, so, and then uh, a good no code service has an app marketplace where you go and you say, okay, you know, I've, I'm using Bubble or I'm using Airtable and I need to connect this to MailChimp. I need to connect this to, um, a lot of times that runs through, um, IFTTT, um, and it, there's a, a few other connect connectivity services like that. Um, and actually, so Vincent, Vincent, for example, um, the, the way those work is, I happen to know a fair bit about this because it's a marketplace I want to uh, I want to join. Um, so the app marketplace, you know, you join up and you get access. A, a lot of so each of the app developers has a, a, a an audience of like a dozen or a hundred customers. Um, and each of those customers, a lot of times what you do is you pay for a bundle, you pay five bucks a month or 10 bucks a month, and you get a bundle of services from the same developer, um, you know, text transformations or connectivity to mail or connectivity to, you know, databases or whatever. Um, so uh, Wendy Elford and I have talked a little bit about doing that for text, having a bunch of text microservices. Um, David Boval's interested in um, uh, different uh, wiki microservices, actually. Uh, Bentley and I have talked about different kinds of microservices. Um, and I think, Bentley, you're interested in the in potentially helping out with the, um, the automation between YouTube and Zoom and stuff like that. Um, so yes. Um, Fairly common thing. Um, uh, one of the services Vincent uses right now is actually uh, one of the ones I wrote, Link Chainsaw, um, which you just shove text at it and it shoves links back. Um, so, uh, so Wendy and I have been talking about doing that as a playground, um, text, you know, text microservices as a playground, um, and then I'm also thinking of some of those microservices as um, paid services. Um, kind of like in, in the no-code marketplaces. Do we have a process to not be independent? Well, a, a coordination process. I mean, basically, I know Bentley's working on things. I know um, Michael has a company. Uh, I've seen code written by uh, Marc Antoine. Um, I know Jack writes code. I write code, you write code. Um, right now we coordinate where... through Flotilla or through FJB, um, or, or actually sometimes it spills out over uh, other Mattermost channels. Um, I, we don't have anything, Flotilla is actually probably the most um, formal thing that we've got. Um, and uh, as you know, it's not particularly formal. Um, 
uh, so Mark Antoine and I have 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 uh, collaborated over MetaBrain um, in the FJB space. Um, Bentley and I have collaborated about some of the Zoom chat um, parsing stuff uh, in some channel. I don't even know which one. Probably three or four. Um, okay, I'm I'm bringing that up as kind of like a Pitfilla Friday. Um, earlier, what did I write? Priorities and process of prioritization, which kind of actually means more like um, how do we coordinate um, in a group and choose what to do. Um, yeah. If I can, I've got to leave in four minutes. Could I just ask what EES DSQ three two one is? Real quick. Yeah, EES is emergent event sense making, and DSQ three two one. I hope I spelled that right. Um, was a um, EES, emergent event sense making, the idea of it is that um, we have these peak, like peak events where a lot of information gets jammed into, into things and there's, it's hard, really hard to do sense making. Uh, the clarion, clarion events for me are 9-11, um, uh, COVID in February, March 2020. Um, and then a much smaller one, but still interesting to me, was the Delta surge, uh, which started, depending how you count, in June or July. Um, I started uh, DSQ3321 uh, in August, first part of August. Um, the Q3 in there stands for quarter three. So the, the new big news update for um, the Delta surge uh, EES um, effort is that I'm going to declare it over because it's the end of Q3. Um, I, I purposely chartered it that way. I named it that way on, on purpose, um, even though if, I don't know if I said it that way as much. Um, uh, but anyway, um, it was an interesting effort. We got, uh, Kreutzer got involved a little bit. Um, I've been doing a fair bit of it. Bill's doing a fair bit. Uh, Michael's been doing a fair bit. Um, uh, we did a good job of data intake and an okay job of data intake considering the small workforce we had um uh we thought a little bit about and i've got some designs i've written up uh, about how you ingest a bunch of like raw um, i call them exhibits um and start to turn those into something that's got more sense made um uh ended up being a fairly small effort um but i i I'm going to, you know, call it a success. Um, and the other thing about EES, um, I guess another one that I missed was the um, the short the GameStop short sell was another one where it was mind blowingly confusing for a week, um, and literally there were tens of billions of dollars swinging around in the balance, um, and it was just remarkable watching, you know, how important that was and how fast everything changed and how how much people didn't know what was going on, so. I think my my overall idea of EES is that we'll get better and better at processing events as they continue to occur. Um, well, we're looking for emerging things, for example, the Evergrande China bankruptcy or possible bankruptcy. Or yeah, default. yeah, that's a that's a good example. Um, okay. And and especially trying to figure out how to decrease the time, EES in particular, how to decrease the time to sense made for things. So I started hearing about Evergrande, I don't know, three or four weeks ago. Um, and I didn't push any buttons or spread any information, but I could have back then, especially if I had things more set up. Hey, what's happening with this Evergrande thing, you know, and how bad is it gonna be and stuff like that. Um, uh, so, part of where I sit in the information space, I, I see the information wave happen before it happens to, to most people. And it would be interesting to kind of, as that wave starts to happen, uh, folks like us help the public make sense of it. Um, Wendy, Michael, and Vincent have a, a thing that they kind of, it's one of the ways they describe it as kind of like EES, but for a longer term, more persistent thing, let's make sense over the long term um, about about things um, and they're building tools and thoughts and stuff about that, how to visualize, um, how to store, how to schemaize, how to dis disseminate, publish. Cheers, Mark, thanks. Okay, more community stuff or pick another, actually, before we do that, um, for Wendy and Bentley, I think um, we talked about picking some more times um, 
better times for uh, Flotilla Friday calls. Um, we're going to pick better times probably after the DST switch um, kerfluff will happen. So right at the start of November. Um, until then, we'll probably just stick with what we got. And in the notes, we've got some thoughts, some bullet notes at least about, you know, we decided kind of to have two meetings a week, I think, um, to get more coverage. And then, and then we kind of promised ourselves or we admonished ourselves to not let the community split too much uh, when we have two meetings. Um, quick, I don't know if it's a community note, but I just want, I don't know if people, everybody here knows about the Tools for Thought meet, meeting. It's a community who meets with authors of Tools for Thought. Uh, they had uh, quite a few interesting people, including the author of um, Codex uh, invited. Uh, this last Monday was the last one, and sorry, I didn't know in advance. Uh, it's monthly. I'll put the I'll, try, I'll put the URL in the chat. So there were there was a two groups. One uh, around something called Sprout Space. That's a Chinese company, and it's a kind of infinite canvas on which you can put live widgets. Uh, very much like Webble World in some ways, but much more primitive. Uh, Webble World is a very specialized tool that Jack knows about. Uh, but anyway, it's one of, <clears throat> as someone said, why are we all reinventing HyperCard all the time? <laughs> um, and, but still interesting. And the other one uh, was called Meta Project, I think. Very cute. Um, there's a closed beta. Project Meta. Project Meta, you are aware of it? Yeah. yeah. Very, very sexy. Uh, yeah. Of course, it seems very self-contained, no interrupt, but in that space, it's very well designed. Yeah, it looks great. It looks great. But it's, yeah, it's self-contained. <laughs> Over. Um, I, I just got... Um... I got an email saying uh, you could sign up for napkin now um, I'm on the napkin waiting list and uh, they said we've got another 100 seats open so I don't know if I've missed that I saw that a couple hours ago. Um, but anyway, napkins happening. There's a thing called mem too. Um, I've been using that. I've been using mem but it's never apparently it's I don't go back to it. So. Uh, mem or memx? Mem. I haven't even tried. Mem. I got out, got in it. I had, you know, and I experimented a little bit, you know, whatever. Totally off topic. I, I, I invoiced uh, somebody in, in the UK and he was going to pay me in USD and to my bank. And then I figured out one of the services I use for wire transfers lets me set up a, a, a GBP um, uh, endpoint. Uh, in the UK, so he paid me uh, GBP in the UK, and it's cheap. That part was free, actually. Um, so I'm going to post that somewhere. Um, but if you need to get paid internationally or pay internationally, um, uh, it's uh, wise.com used to be TransferWise. Very good service. Uh, much, much, much cheaper and better than other things. There's a great service for open source projects uh, where I'll try to find it and where, where you can base it's it's a kind of a GoFundMe type thing, but open source and very uh, decentralized. And if only we had a database where people could keep track of these things, because I know I've got a list of stuff like that somewhere. <laughs> it's not yet on a massive wiki. Uh, more community stuff. Um, how much longer can people stay and I, I would love to talk about hyper knowledge, but I don't want to fit it into a few minutes. I'll um, just mention, I, I just put a link in the chat to an event that I physically attended last night um, that was uh, about 
um, tech and public interest um, that had some good folks on it. And I'm pretty sure the, I don't see anything there about the recording being made available, but I think it will be. And I think it's going to catch. Um, yeah, just wanted to, to share that. Thanks, Michael. Thinking as much as I, I'd love to chat with with y'all, um, maybe we should kind of keep it to an hour. Um, I I would I haven't had time to really go back to last Friday's call and digest any of it or harvest any of it. Um, and I think maybe we should figure out how to do that together. Um, uh, I, you know, and, and then I have visions of, of, of like, okay, so we've got the YouTube recording and we've got a transcript and then how, you know, and then we're screen sharing all of that and we're taking notes on HackMD and Massive and <clears throat> it sounds like a pain in the butt, but we, we got to start doing that across all of our meetings and Flotilla wouldn't be a bad place to start. I was going to say we, if, if I'm going to make this meeting regular on, on Tuesday, so let's start next Tuesday and let me, uh, let's discuss harvesting or path questions. I will put a Zoom link in uh, the flotilla Mattermost. Um, you might make a hyper knowledge channel on Mattermost. Sure. And Good idea. you could still post the link in flotilla, um, but. Makes sense. I have my own matter most. I should maybe use it also. <laughs> <It's>... Maybe. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but it uh, um, it's requires it's... invitations. You're already on this one. So yeah, sure. Um, I'm liking Matrix, even though I know it's yet another chat service. But I love um, Matrix. Yeah. Because they understand interoperability <laughs> like nobody else does. I've also set up Matrix on my server. <laughs> uh, it may need updating. I'll look into that. Anyway, I'll let's I'll just put the Zoom channel for now. <laughs> okay, folks. Thanks all. Thanks. Great stuff. <laughs>